All right, so now we have our kind of base shader that we wanna create. And the next step is gonna to be to add movement using the vertex function along with some kind of uh, clipping of pixels so that parts of the image can disappear during the glitches. So we're actually gonna add uh, one more uh, property and another line to the fragment function to throw away certain colors under certain conditions. So we are going to start with a new property. We'll call this, let's call it cutout thresh. And it will be cutout threshold. This is going to be a float and we'll set it to 0.2. Let's make this a range between 0.0, .0 and 1.0, just for niceness sake. And down here, we're gonna declare it as well. It's a float, it's cut out thresh. And basically what we're gonna do in the fragment shader before we return our color, we are gonna use a function called clip. And what clip allows us to do is to discard certain pixel data. And what we're gonna do with it is we're gonna say call dot r minus cutout thresh. So we're gonna clip any pixels that have less than a certain amount of red and, and get rid of them, not draw them, right? Another way that you could write this, uh, and actually the way that I had originally written it, and then one of my colleagues pointed out clip is this. So if call.r, so if the amount of red in this is less than our cutout threshold, discard it, right? So get rid of any pixels that are not sufficiently red to make it through. And that's the exact same thing that uh, clip is doing for us here. Um, my colleague Guillaume told me that clip was like more widely used. So I figured I would show you the the version that's more widely used because you may see it in other shaders, uh, but it's doing effectively the same thing, just testing to see if it's sufficiently red and if not, throwing it away. Okay, so now we're gonna save that. Okay, here we go. So now we can see if we're at zero, we have our existing image, but then as we slide it up, all of the blue and blackish parts start to get clipped out. And if we go all the way up, we clip out almost everything, right? So I'm gonna set this around this kind of 0.2 kind of level. Uh, and so what's gonna happen is when we have our glitch effects, when our glitches occur, it's gonna clip out to this, right? So a lot of stuff is gonna disappear and this is going to be all that's visible. And then we're gonna apply some uh, vertex processing to the remaining um, vertices. So let's do that now. So basically what we're gonna do is in the vertex function, before we convert our vertices screen space, we're gonna wiggle them around. And we're gonna do this using a sign function. Um, and so I'm gonna need actually a bunch of properties for this, so let's add them. So we're going to need a distance property which is going to be a float uh, equal to one. We're going to need a amplitude property, which is going to be a float equal to one. We're gonna need a speed Speed, which is gonna be a float also equal to one. And then we're gonna need a amount, which is basically gonna be a um, multiplier value, which is also gonna be a float equal to one. Okay, then we're gonna need floats for all of these down here. So we're gonna have float distance, float amplitude, float speed and float amount. And we're going to use them in the vertex function now, right? We've been working in the fragment function so far because we've been working with colors and pixels uh, or, or fragments. 
Uh, and now we're going to actually manipulate the vertices before they get passed to the fragment function. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the following line of code. We're gonna say v, so this is our app data struct, right? v.vertex.x plus equals, so here we're still in object space, right? So this is gonna be relative to the object, plus equals sign, and what we're gonna use here is we're gonna use time.y. So time is a stream of values incoming from Unity. Uh, in this case, it comes in as a uh, float four with different time values for each uh, x, y, z, and w. Y is the time in seconds. So this is something that's provided for us by Unity. So it's this is the same as time.time .time in the C-sharp world. So we're gonna multiply that by speed plus v.vertex.y times amplitude. Then we're gonna multiply all of that times distance times amount, right, for our final scaling value. So basically what this is gonna do is allow us to apply this kind of sinusoidal movement to our vertices in object space along the x-axis before they get translated uh, in the unity object eclipse position function. So we can see, right, these are the default values. We can see it animating in the scene view. We're not in play mode, right? So we can see this is not animation. This is happening purely at the vertex level inside the shader. Let's turn the threshold down for a second. We can see it. Looks like he's underwater. Um, and the reason we can see the animated material is here. You can turn on or off animated materials in the scene view. So what I'm going to do here is we can kind of dial this up. I'm going to turn up the distance a little bit. The speed is going to be how, let's make the speed pretty high. Look at that. And then the amount is what we're going to, whoops, oh, this, see, I shouldn't be able to do that. Let's set the amount to be a range as well before we go any further. The amount should be a range, zero and one, uh, 0.0, .0 and 1.0, save. Um, all right, good, so now we're gonna limit that between zero, no glitch effect, right, no movement, and one fully glitchy. And let's crank this up so it's like quite intense. Let's try that. So we're gonna go in and out of this and this. So it's basically gonna do this and turn up the cutout, turn up the cutout threshold. And so this, I'm pretty sure you could automate in the shader itself. I chose to do it in a simple C-sharp script here called the Hollow Man Glitcher, which I'll just show you quickly. The interesting, part of this or kind of like the relevant part of this is the using uh, renderer.material.setfloat and then addressing the properties of the shader, right? So we're saying, I wanna set the amount to one, I wanna set the cutout threshold to 0.29 and these need to match, right? So we need to make sure that these cutout thresh here matches this, we're passing it through as a string, right? So I'll give you a really fast, this is shipped finished in the project so you can look it over at your leisure, but I'll give you a, a fast overview of what this is. Basically, we're gonna get a component reference to the renderer. I've turned start into a coroutine that is looping every uh, 0.1 seconds every 0.1 seconds, it checks a random number, right, between zero and one, and if it's less than 0.1, it's gonna start this coroutine called glitch, right? So basically, it loops 10 times a second, and 10% of the time, it will fire off a glitch effect. 
The glitch coroutine basically starts by turning up the amount, setting the cutoff threshold to 0.29, setting the amplitude to a random number between zero, between 100 and 250, um, setting the speed to a random number between one and 10, waiting for the glitch duration, which is 0.1 seconds, uh, and then setting the amount back to zero and the cutout threshold back to zero, right? So basically resetting it. So this is just like randomly, maybe roughly one time a second, it's gonna fire off one of these glitches. Oh, and also randomize the glitch duration to be between 0.05 and 0.25 seconds. So simple C-sharp script, nothing super crazy or complex there, just a little random glitchy behavior. All of that comes together when we enter play mode to this. Kind of cool, random, glitchy behavior. Right now it's probably a little uh, over overdone, right? You could probably turn it down some, but just to show it, uh, I think this is pretty good. You can kind of really see it happening. And obviously this is a kind of a weird glitchy effect that I decided to create here, but I thought it was cool to show a little bit of vertex function stuff, a little bit of fragment function stuff, manipulating the image in a couple of different ways. Um, and hopefully was kind of simple enough and informative enough for you guys to get started writing your first shader in Unity. Um, I know I had a lot of fun uh, doing this stuff and I'm definitely excited to dig more into the world of shaders. So watch this space. I'll try to do some more kind of simple shader stuff um, in the live trading channel. And I'm gonna stick around and take some questions from the chat, but thanks so much for watching.